Welcome to episode number three of season two of Animation Power Tips. This series is sponsored by Autodesk. Thank you very much to Autodesk for sponsoring this series. My name is Harvey Newman. I'm an animation director, and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel with all of you. This series, it's all about showcasing Maya and tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my career and share more efficient ways of working as you guys go through your animation journey. I've been watching some of the videos that you guys send over with questions um, about Maya, workflows, how do you work, how do you make things better? And some of the questions that you guys have are very different than what I thought you guys are gonna ask. And this is really cool for me because it feels that I'm actually doing this season more with you guys in mind. And um, I think that this is, as a result, uh, this is much more useful for all of you. So this week we have a question by Koza. Koza is a brother from Japan, or at least residing in Japan right now. And he had a very interesting question that I didn't see coming, but at the same time, it makes complete sense. So Koza, take it away. Hey, what's going on, Harvey? It's your boy Koza. And I'm broadcasting straight from the heart of Tokyo. Um, yeah, so for my question, uh, I was curious about cloth simulation. How do you set that up? How do you set up cloth simulation in Maya? Uh, they use a similar technique in a game like Genshin Impact. Uh, I guess that's a good reference. And I was curious on how to do the same thing or achieve a similar effect uh, in Maya. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I'm getting my, uh, my contest materials ready to go. So uh, be on the lookout for those, and I'll, I'll be sending them your way pretty soon. Anyways, good luck to everybody else, and look forward to seeing the video. Peace. Right, so as you can see, animating cloth. Animating cloth is incredibly difficult, and it's something that I really haven't tested very much throughout my career because I didn't have the need to. However, I really think that it's something that perhaps you guys can use to enhance your showreels, your animation pieces, etc., etc. Now, keep in mind that animation by itself, even without cloth, even if you have like a shirt or pants that are incredibly stiff and it's just ge geometry not moving, is the main goal here, right? You want to be the best animator possible. And the way you do that is by animating first. So as long as you keep in mind that this is just something a little extra that you can add to your animations that will enhance your animations, then you're going to be in a good place, right? Now, because I haven't worked with end cloth very much and you guys have to have the best explanation possible, this is my goal with these videos at all times, I've enrolled the help of a friend, Kyle Chapman, a guy that works with me, a Build a Rocket Boy uh, in my animation team, incredibly, incredibly talented animator. And I think the way he breaks down cloth for you guys in this video is brilliant and it's gonna make you guys wanna at least give it a try in your animations. So without further ado, take it away, Kyle. Hi guys, I'm Kyle Chapman, animator, here to show you three tips to get started with cloth in Maya. So let's get to it. Tip number one, using cloth to make props. Here we have a simple table prop, but we can dress it up a little better. So to set the table, first we make a plane and position it above our table. And add some edge loops so it can deform. Then we turn the plane into cloth using this icon here in the effects tab. And we can see it falling here so we know it's dynamic. Then we make the table a passive collider with this icon so it catches the cloth. Then we let the simulation run, and voila, we have a tablecloth. If the simulation is too low res or it's taking more time than you like, you can change the poly count on the cloth at any time and rerun the simulation. There are a lot of uh, self-explanatory options in the cloth node, but one that will affect your simulation time the most is thickness, which sets how far from the mesh it collides with passive colliders and with itself, if self collide is on. The higher it is, the more effect your simulation time. If you're not sure what settings to use to achieve your desired result, you can always pick one of the presets on the node and tweak it from there.
If you like the result but want to keep testing, you can duplicate the mesh and save as an option just off of the side and rerun the simulation. Once you're happy with the result, stick in a candle, add some spaghetti, and that's amore. Tip number two, placing cloth on your animated characters. Here I'll be using this do-it rig from Animation Mentor. So first we need to model the clothes you want to place on your character. Here I've just duplicated the main mesh and tweaked it to give Stu some trousers. Next, same as before, we turn the clothes into a cloth sim and the character into a passive collider. As you can see here, Stu doesn't have a belt. So to save him from further embarrassment, we select the top row of vertices and then the main geometry and go to end constraint point to surface. So now it should stay in place. I'm just going to enable this animation layer here so we can see it in action. We can see the cover of the trousers flips up a little bit here. To make it move more how I want, I'll just select the heavy denim preset. That's looking a little bit better now. To animate the character without running the simulation, we can go to Modify Evaluation Nodes and turn off End Rigids and End Cloth to disable it while we pose our character. Then just re-enable evaluation and unhide the cloth when you're ready to finesse the final simulation. Tip number three, creating loops for export for in-game. Here I've created a simple curtain prop. We'll just go ahead and make that a cloth and then pin it in place by selecting the top vertices and using end constraint, transform constraint. I'll use the silk preset to make a nice flowing material. Then I'll select the Nucleus node to modify the built-in wind generator and I'll add some noise, change the wind direction to Z forward and keyframe the wind speed to move the curtain. Once we're happy with the result, we can go ahead and bake that into the vertices using Edit, Keys, Bake Simulation with the control point setting checked. We can turn off the evaluation nodes and see it's running from animation data now. To make it loop for game engines, we can create a new layer and pick two parts of the animation where the cloth looks similar and preferably flowing in the same direction. Take the first frame and middle mouse drag that to the end frame and hit S to key it. Now we have a looping mesh animation. To export this as an FBX for engine, first we'll make a cache for this animation using cache, geometry cache, create new cache. Then we'll make a set using create sets set and name it appropriately. Then we can click File, Export, Selection, and under the Geometry Cache Files tab, we select the set that we made and hit Export. We can bring it into a new Maya scene just to test and see our animation working, so we'll know it'll work in Engine. You can stick it in a spooky hallway, add some spaghetti, and you're done. Okay guys, I hope those tips were helpful for getting started with Mcloth in Maya. I'll let Harvey take it from here. <laughs> right, so as you guys can see, Kyle is a blast. He has a really nice sense of humor and I think the way he broke down those three tips that he gave on cloth and how to best use it most likely will help most of you out there and it will fit most of your needs because at the end of the day, we want to put cloth either in objects or in characters in animation and make it look amazing. Thank you very much, Kyle, for this. Um, if you guys want more, if you guys want to see more of Kyle here in this channel, if you guys want more explanations, then drop a comment down below 
and show your appreciation for Kyle because he spent a lot of time working on this and making sure that it looks and sounds as good as possible. And that's it. That's all I had for you guys this week. As always, thank you very much to my patrons for actually helping me out every single month. If you ha guys haven't checked it out yet, go and check out my Patreon page. There's lots of perks there that I think you guys are gonna enjoy behind the scenes and uh, seeing videos before anybody else seeing them and all that good stuff. So make sure you check it out. Now, thank you very much once again to Autodesk for sponsoring this video. I highly appreciate that. And as always, see you guys next week with more tips and more tricks. Have a great rest of the week. Until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.